A previous overview video showed you some basic Snap Center graphical user interface or GUI options. This video provides a tour through each of the navigation pane options. Let's log in to Snap Center. Enter your username and password and click Sign In. For this example, I'll show you the pages when you select the SQL Server plugin. The information on each page changes based on the plugin that you choose to work with. In a previous overview video, we reviewed the dashboard. Next on the left navigation pane is the resources page. This page displays all the resources, databases, availability groups, file systems, etc. that Snap Center manages. This is where you go to back up, restore, or clone any of these resources. This is also where you can group resources into a resource group so they can be backed up and managed together. Snap Center automatically discovers resources and displays them on this page after each application or database is added. Before performing any task, be sure to choose the plugin you want to work with from the plugin drop down filter. The list of applications that appears is controlled by role based access. An admin might see all of them, while a SQL Server DBA might see only the SQL Server option. If you chose Microsoft SQL Server as the plugin, you see the database view where you can see all of the SQL Server databases that are known to Snap Center. This page lists protected and unprotected resources. You can select a resource and initiate protection. Or you can select a protected resource and display the topology view where you can restore, clone, or initiate an on-demand backup. The third option on the left navigation pane is monitor. You can view jobs, schedules, events, and logs. You can select a job and look at its details. Each of the steps can be expanded to reveal more detail of the backup job in progress. In addition, you can view logs associated with each job. Next on the left navigation pane is the reports option. This page lets you create backup, clone, restore, and plugin reports. You can even specify the period of time you want for the report, the hosts, the resource groups, resources, which policy you want, and which status you want. Let's look next at the host option on the navigation pane. The host page shows servers, physical or virtual, that Snap Center knows about for application or database protection. From here, you can add hosts or see details of that host. For an application that needs to be managed by Snap Center, you must add the application host using this UI. From this page, you can also create, delete, or resize LUNs attached to the hosts and create, delete shares, iGroups, and iSCSI sessions. Next, let's look at the Storage Systems option in the left navigation pane. This page enables you to add, modify, or delete storage system connections that enable Snap Center to communicate with ONTAP SVMs. This page is typically used only by storage admins when they add or manage those connections. Finally, the last option on the navigation pane is the settings option. This option enables you to customize Snap Center's global settings, policies, and role-based access control. You can assign roles and assign permissions to access specific resources with the use of run as credentials. And you can also manage plugin updates from this page.
This is an overview of the UI. For details on how to do these backup, restore, and clone processes, see the plugin specific videos on the SNAP Center video playlist. Or, to learn more, you can look at the how to instructions in the SNAP Center Documentation Center listed at docs.netapp.com. You can also look at the SNAP Center resources page to find a collection of videos, product documentation, technical reports, and more. Thank you for watching.